Welcome, good morning, and welcome to the Grand Sport Center on Grand Sport Extra. And it's good to be with you this morning. So much to talk about in the world of sports. The much anticipated match between Nigeria and Sierra Leone has been played. It ended 0 0, and a lot of fallouts from that match. Many are told that Super Eagles are going to redeem themselves after um, giving up a four goal lead in the first match. And, but then they could not do more than uh, playing out a goalless draw in Freetown. Not a bad result as he goes through top the group. We shall be talking about that and other fallout from that match. And also other African Cup of Nations results. Ghana lost to Sudan, a surprise result, that is. But then that is football for you. We shall do a countdown also to the Nigerian Professional Football League that is due to start in December, the first week of next month. And um, the league management company have expressed satisfaction with the upgrades currently being done on most of the stadia across the country. Um, on October 30th, the league management company, that's the LMC, had released a list of about um, 13 approved stadia and then 11 others that needed to be upgraded. So, like, work has started in most of this study, and it is very, very pleasing to the league management company. The UEFA Nations League matches were played yesterday. Very interesting results coming in from Europe. Um, the most interesting being the 6 0 bashing of West Gem of Germany by um, Spain. Well, some people say they are surprised, but we all know that the Spanish team on a good day can beat any team. They just had some poor results in recent times, but it bounced back, and a big way it was beating almighty Germany by six goals to six goals to nil. Shall we be talking about that match and other results from the UF, UEFA Nations League? Then, tennis, uh, the big one, Rafael Nadal, who has done so well this season, breaking one record after the other, fell to Dominic Thiem in the ongoing ATP Finals at the O2 Arena in London. Surprise uh, was a surprising one, given the way Rafa, Rafael Nadal started when he won his first match on Monday, beating um, Andrew Rublev in a very, very um, fascinating fashion. But then, it was not to be against TM, as TM showed that he's one of those uh, that we should be taking a look at as regards who will eventually win this year's tournament. It was actually a finalist last year, so maybe he wants to go one better this time around, which is impressive display. In athletics, Castor Simeya, the South, Ameri the South African 400 meters runner, who has had this running battle with the World Athletics Federation is still on. Uh, you know, he, he, she was asked to um, take testosterone suppressing drugs in order to reduce her level of testosterone because they said what she has is a little above the normal. So that means if you're not competing fairly with the other athletes. So in order to have a level playing field, the IWF said if she must compete in uh, 400 meters and other sports, uh, she should. Um, take um, testosterone suppressing drugs or undergo surgery. But she says she cannot do that. She's been battling, battling it. She went to the Court of Arbitration for Sports cast. She lost the battle there. She took it to the Swiss um, uh, Federal Court. She lost the battle. Now she's taking it to the uh, European Human Rights Court and she says she's going to continue fighting this fight. She's been included in South, South Africa's team to the Olympic Games. So despite all these battles, she's, she's still going to the Olympics, but what we don't know is which sports she's going to compete in. So we'll talk about these and also the fact that um, in basketball, the NBA season will start uh, in December, 22nd of December precisely, and the structure and schedule for the season has been made known. Shall we be talking about these? And also, if time permitting, we shall also talk about the Club World Cup football that has been moved from December to February. These are more we have for you on Grand Sports Center today. Just sit back and relax. Hopefully, you will be able to spice up your day with this interesting package we have for you. I am Donald Abavobo. I have with me, as usual, Austin Arume. Thank you for having me. And Blessing Basti. So we'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll go straight to the business of the day.
Welcome back to the Grand Sports Center and straight we go to the review of the Nigeria vs. Free Alone AFCON qualifier that was played yesterday in Freetown. It's no longer news that the match ended 0 0 and that Nigeria still tops the group with, with um, eight, go eight points. No thanks to the fact that um, Bene were only able to play a draw with Lesotho. So they have seven points, Nigeria has eight points, and um, uh, Sierra Leone has three points. So Nigeria is still. Uh, in a poor position to qualify for the Nations Cup, but then we are doing it the other way. Austin, in natural, we thought that there would be a reaction. They said they were going to have a reaction. Is this the kind of reaction we're expecting from the Eagles? Yeah, that's, this is not actually the kind of reaction like we're looking out to see. But then, you know, uh, when I saw that match, I, I think at, at one point, I thought we're actually going to lose that match. You know, uh, I think in the first half. But then when they came back, in the second half, I think the game, uh, the whole scenario changed, and I don't know. I believe uh, at this point in time, I don't want to, you know, sound harsh, but the fact is, uh, Coach General is not actually, uh, you know, having it right, and I believe uh, something has to be done. You know, the whole there are a lot of issues. Just, when you say something has to be done, you yeah. have to hit the nail on the head. Is it that we should change General, or what do you think we should do? At this do point, you think we've We've seen the best of him. We can't have anything better than this. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's what I'm saying. He has spent uh, close to three years now, or more, more than, than three four. years in this, in this country. And we keep seeing, you know, uh, every time the spy goes to play, we, are, we have a new player. We don't have a defined pattern. This is where we are going. And you can't even say, you know, uh, this is the particular style Nigeria is playing. So I believe. Uh, we cannot continue like this, you know. But, Even but, if we but, but, but for yesterday's match, Genetra had a reason. He said um, the pitch, set of the pitch was poor. That was why his players, the Super Eagles, could not actually play uh, to their uh, potential or to the capacity that we know that they can play. Is that a terrible excuse? Well, of course, it's, it's part of the reason because definitely the pitch was not in a good state, if you ask me. And then um, pitch like that could cause um, injuries and it won't bring out um, the player's um, actual performance um, needed in, um, in a game. But to an extent, you won't actually be, um, blame Gunnar Roy. I think it's what the Super Eagles is passing through. It, it's just a phase. Just a phase. Uh, just but, a phase. But, but again, talking about the pitch, um, this is Africa. We should be used to pitches like this. I remember um, Trus Ekong was asked about the pitch. And he said, they understand that you can't get the kind of pitch that, you, that they have in, Af in Europe, in Africa. And they've been playing in Africa for some time, so they are used to it. But somehow, the issue of pitch still came up. Is, is it just that um, it must be an excuse? I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't see it as an excuse. Even the Sierra Leoneans, they know. They know, because uh, I think during the break, uh, when uh, Mohamed Kalon was asked to come and comment, I think he did mention something like that. He was talking about how they can use, you know, the, the pitch, the to, the pitch to their advantage. And, 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 and that brings me to what we've been saying. You know, the state of the pitch, they knew, Ra complained that they were playing long balls because they knew that they can't play free flow football. Yeah. So they, 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 they adopted a pattern that they knew could work on the pitch of play. Yeah. So it just brings us back to the fact that Nigerian national team, there's no harm um, in having your players based abroad, but the issue of not having home base players in the team, does this actually give reasons why we should be looking inwards at least? <laughs> Someone said something earlier that if there were to be home based players, they would have at least understand the pitch better, but I won't look at it from that perspective. You know, the, 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 the Super Eagles players are more international, coming from various parts of the world, and they're used to playing in a pitch where um, everything is comfortable. They are, the, the, the mentality, the, the, the way of play, you know, everything works out smooth for them. But coming to a pitch like that of Syria alone, I think it it's kind of demoralizes their state of performance. Well, um, going back to what Austin was saying earlier concerning um, in a row, not actually giving us anything better than this, because we've been here for four years. Is it that 
Can, can we say that in actual fact? Because everybody has been saying it. Even I remember Sadio Mane said this sometime last year, that Nigeria has the best collection of players at the moment. Are we really maximizing those players? We're not maximizing them at all. Uh, at times, I, one would wonder with the caliber of player that we have, we're not supposed to be struggling to qualify for a tournament like this. We have Lesotho, uh, Benin Republic, and Sierra Leone in our group, and we are still struggling to qualify. When, if, uh, when even Cameroon, that are hosting, that they know they, 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 they even without uh, qualifying but, from but, the but, distance, but, are but still winning Austin, matches. Austin, um, let, let's be very careful. Yeah. If you talk about struggling to qualify, those other countries, they also play football. It's not as if um, they, 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 they can't kick the ball at all. Because we've seen some very interesting results as well. Um, Cote d'Ivoire played 1-1 with Madagascar mm -hmm. away from home. And uh, Sudan beat Ghana. And um, so we've, we've had some very interesting results. I told we, we saw that the Commodores beat Kenya. Yeah. So is it really about the result or the fact that the Eagles have not actually played? They, they don't actually play well. You, you said something earlier that would be a, a very important point. Yeah. No defined pattern, no? But the caliber of players we, we have, even Super Eagles draw or lose, you know, we still need to see them dominate the opponent, kind of players we have. Exactly. Is that the issue really? Or is that more important that actually the result? Because results could go either ways, but how does the team play? I, I believe uh, I'll have to put the, the let me say 70 percent of the blame on the coach because you are the one inviting these players and if you are inviting a particular player you should already have in mind what style of uh, play you are going to execute that match with we have uh, a, a certain follow now to who is good with his club and then when he gets to the super egos you see him struggling he says a lot about the coach now, what are you doing to improve uh, Paul Onachu? You know, Paul Onachu is very young, he's tall. In a game like yesterday, if we had a, a, an informed Paul Onachu, no, no, it's not, it's not that he's not informed, but he's not getting the service. Who is giving him that ball? If you watch the game in Benin, when they brought him in, I, I, wanted to, like, I wanted to say he's struggling, but then, who is giving him that ball? At the point in that time, he was lamenting the fact that he, were, he was not given, you know, uh, they, they, they was not delivered uh, any, and there was no, no service. Uh, no service. So this is what we are talking about. Now you are bringing in a tall striker, a tall announcer, you know, to who you know is, you know, uh, is good aerially. And then you are playing the ball on the ground. You, are not, you don't even get to see crosses coming from and the even, wing. And even yesterday's match, when they played in a pitch that is not good, I would have needed to playing it up. Yeah. And maybe then Onachi would have been much more effective. He wasn't featured. So again, it boils down to Penatra. Um <laughs> is it is it still the man? Because a lot of people have been talking about it and it's been silently said, but nobody has actually had any cause to uh, be very uh, vocal about it because to be fair to him, he has qualified for the World Cup. All the tournaments that he, he, he we, have, we have participated in, he has qualified for the World Cup and Last Nations Cup. So this, this is really the first time that um, we are seeing things being a bit shaky. And like Nigerians have come to the point that this is no longer a young team because before we were just satisfied with going to the World Cup, World Cup for Nations Cup. The point we are in now, Nigerians, when you qualify for the Nations Cup, you should go all out to win it. If you qualify for the World Cup, you should compete favorably and very well for the trophy as well. So, is Genatro, does Genatro still have more time to get things in shape for the team? Well, um, if you'd ask me, Genatro have, if you look at his, um, um, his performance so far from the four years he has spent in Nigeria, let's not rule out the fact that he has also done so well, especially for the Super Eagles in the past. With, um, we've won games with um, Argentina and also Algeria too. And, we, and, uh, and Brazil yes, forced us to join a friendly exactly. match. Exactly. So there are other good times. We beat with, Cameroon. You know, and we beat Cameroon zero. twice. Yeah. You know. So there are other um, good, good times. Result. With, good so, results. Well, with whatever Canada. it is, um, maybe the Venatro just needs to um, do a little bit of tinkering of the team. Uh, maybe, like um, Austin pointed out, 
the pattern is employing is not working out and uh, should just see how you can get the best out of those players. We know Nigerian players are very, very good, but I just think uh, you just need a, little, a bit of twinking so that um, they get the best out of them. We're still talking about this match. One player that the coach has been praising is Madoka Okoye. You know, he, he let in four goals in the first leg. Do, was it really at fault? Well, one can really actually say it was at fault, but because of the nature of the match, the way the goals came in, it was uh, made a scapegoat somehow, himself and a few other players. But then the coach kept faith with him, and um, yesterday he did very well, made two good saves in the first half. And um, so, could you say that um, the coach was justified in keeping faith with uh, Madoka Okoye? Uh, he's only trying to justify his selection. You know, I, I like Maduka Okoye. He's somebody I like, you know, on a personal uh, level. But the fact is, when he was asked when, during that interview, he mentioned, he just uh, talked about Maduka Okoye in a match that we dominated. We dominated that match, especially in the second half. We saw how Yana uh, almost scored, if not for that, you know, top draw save from, you know, the Serenian goalkeeper. So you are asked to come and uh, comment on a match like that. You you just you know singled out, singled out the goalkeeper. It's just that's just him, you know, trying to justify the reason for his so selection. selection. Well, well, and, and anyway, Maduka Okoye is is good to know that he has been able to redeem himself because I actually feared for him because such things, if he had been dropped, would have actually affected his confidence. So the fact that he was able to play another match after that four four draw. And this time he didn't concede, I'm sure that he will pick up from here. His club, but after that, I've already sent him a continuity message for keeping a clean sheet, which goes to tell you that they are watching and they are very proud to, to have the Nigerian number one goalkeeper for now being their player. And another match is played in Africa yesterday. There were some very interesting results. One for me, Sudan beat Ghana 1-0. Um, this, 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 this kind of result, a few years back, you would not even expect or think about but like now it's been happening <laughs> it's happening so it's become very rampant the big teams fall into the small teams nigeria almost lost to Sierra Leone. i just mentioned Cote d'Ivoire also played the one wonder with madagascar on a good day Cote d'Ivoire with madagascar you will say so the results from other african uh, qualifiers ethiopia beat niger by three goals to zero lesotho and Bene, those are other teams in our group they played out zero zero draw that was, a, that was a very good result for Nigeria because it meant Nigeria remained on top with eight points. If, if Benny had won, they would have gone ahead to top the group. Madagascar and Cote d'Ivoire won one, Rwanda and Cape Verde 0 0. So many draws, I must tell you. Sudan beat Ghana 1 0. Angola lost at home to DR Congo 1 0. Central African Republic lost at home to Morocco by two goals to nil. Akim Zayed scored again. That Chelsea player is in very good form. Then Togo. Egypt spanked Togo by three goals to one without Mohamed Salah. So, in all of these results, like I said earlier, the Sudan Ghana match was a surprise for me. But even the Egypt, Egypt did not start this um, qualifiers very well. I think they lost, drew their first two matches, but they've bounced back now. And given the fact that they play without Mohamed Salah, so could we say that um, this Egyptian team is a team to watch out for? Yeah, in the Egyptian team, they are always a team to watch out for any day, any time. Or to the fact that you know they have a very strong league, even without you know inviting the foreign based players, you you can still see them you know uh, persecuting that match. If you remember during uh, that period where they were so dominant, you can see that most of their players are actually home based yes. players. So I believe you know uh, at this point in time they are beginning to pick, they're beginning to gel. Not like uh, they don't know each other, but you know things happen in football, and at the point where. You, there are times where you will not be informed, you will not be at, the, at your best. So I believe they are beginning to get you know, uh, to that level, you know, which uh, everybody is expected them to be, expecting them to be. And uh, when you see Sudan beat Ghana 1-0, don't you think that we have, been too, we, are, we have been too hard on our Super Eagles? Well, of course we are, we are not being hard on Super Eagles. The Super Eagles were supposed to you know, do, give a better performance, but Sudan, Ghana, like Austin said, the game of football changed most times, so you never can tell, you know. Anyway, those are the results from other African competitors, qualifiers. For now, the matches will cease because the next round of matches will not come up until March next year. Nigeria has to go to Benin to play Benin, then 
than Lesotho here in Nigeria. So just three points from those two matches, they should be able to secure the ticket to Cameroon for the AFCOM 2021 or 2022 because it will take place in January 2022. So we'll take a short break now and when we come back, we'll talk about Nigerian Professional Football League. After all said and done, it's due to start next month and the preparations for the league, for the commencement has already started. One of the things that, that usually um, enrolls the new season is um, inspection of facilities to ensure that the stadia are in good shape towards matches. The LMC has done that and the stadia have been satisfied good enough, others have not and they've been asked to put the facilities in place. The LMC says they're happy that work is going on in most of the stadia and it goes to show the level of seriousness of the clubs and the owners who are most, mainly state governors or state governments in ensuring that we have a very good season. We shall be talking about the league when we come back from the short break. Welcome back to the Grand Sports Center and we're talking about the Nigerian Professional Football League now. The chairman of the LMC League Management Company, Sheo Diko, says um, he's happy that um, the stadia have been renovated and put in place. Of, the of all the stadia, 13 have already been approved, certified, okay to host matches and um, 11 others were asked to be put in order for them to host matches. But then the, the news is that most of the teams whose stadia were affected have been asked to get alternative venue, pick alternative venue from amongst the 13. But generally, the fact that work is going on in the stadia, we know that football has not taken place in the stadia for mm -hmm. almost a year, yeah. this since March this year. And now you could imagine the state of those facilities. You know, on, on a good day when, when activities are taking place there, these facilities are still are not actually in the best condition. Yeah. So you can imagine how it is when they were abandoned. So for therefore, what to be going on now is testimony to the fact that the, the owners of the club, who are mainly the state governments, are really eager to get the league started. So how do we? Uh, what, what? How positive is this for us to have a very positive, uh, a very good league this season? I think it's it's a good one, uh, if I must say. Uh, let me just deviate a little bit. I used to complain about, you know, stadiums in Nigeria, you know, the pitch, the condition of uh, the, the pitch. But when I saw, you know, what I saw yesterday at the Seattle Stadium Stadium, I think uh, I, I one would wonder if you have a national stadium like that. But that's not what we are talking you about. You not compare yourself <laughs> with the bad pitches. Yeah. Compare yourself with the best. That's yeah. how you grow. And yeah, grow. yeah, yeah, yeah. But... The fact is, uh, it's actually a good one uh, that we are having this. I think uh, it actually uh, improved the image of the league. Uh, when you have a good pitch, you know, uh, you, you, you see, I think it tends to bring, you know, uh, attractive football. You know, when you are playing on a bad pitch or when you are playing in a stadium where the facilities are not complete, like let's say you don't have... Uh, uh, like a restroom there or so so many things the, the, there are so many things that can be missing in a stadium but the most important one is the one we see outside like the pitch now if you are playing on a bad pitch you know it, it affects uh, the level of uh, you know uh, um, play on the on the field of play so if we can have uh, good pitches good stadium i think it will go a long way in you know uh, attracting you know good football and also attracting investors as well because i think we need people to invest in our football we have to make our football attractive so as you know investors to, can come and invest i think uh, I, I i like the idea of you know them trying to you know improve uh, the stadium yes indeed uh, the, the, the stadia have been improved and um, the irony is that one of the best we have right now which is um the summer of the stadium will not be hosting um, league matches because 
Benin, Edo State or Benin City does not have a team in the Nigerian Professional Football League. Though Benin Insurance are playing in the second tier of the league, but then would have reached that um, the top league in the country, which is Nigerian Professional Football League, will have this get this pitch to us because we have the VAR there. So probably would have been able to have um, uh, the VAR used in the Nigerian League for the first time. Well, for some of these clubs that have to relocate to other venues and. Um, they are, they are playing at home away from home somehow because um, that's not their natural venue because their, ve their normal uh, venue has been renovated. It, would this affect the standard we see? Because you see, when you're playing, supposed to play a match at home, it's not really your home. You may not actually be at your best. So, are we still going to get a very well organized and standard league this season? Of course, we'll get a, a well-organized and standard lead. The, the basic thing is um, they should look into... It's not all about not using your stadium. They should look into, you know, renovating their, their pitch because these are pitches that were used, you know, to play um, football in the past. So why not just work on it? You know, so That's what they're doing right now. And that's what the, yeah. that's what the LMC says. They're very happy that it's happening. Like, we have a Munanda Adikwe Stadium. Work is going on there. If I Mobile Stadium, Nunewi, work is going on there. The New Jersey City Stadium, work is going on there. Uh, Dumuaya Stadium, Jigawa, in, uh, the stadium in Dutse, and also the Wari Township Stadium. All the stadium work is going on there. But then the clubs that are affected by this innovation, do we have to play their matches in other venues? So if you are supposed to be playing home matches, you may be playing it in another venue. So. Um, do you think that it will affect the standard or quality of play that we we'll see? Well, it it might affect it a little bit because they they obviously need to work on, you know, the especially with the time given to them to, you know, work on their pitch. They need to do that because the quality of football matters, you know, because it's 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 if um, their pitch is not in order and they need to play a game, they need to be readily available and they need to put their pitch in order because if a bad pitch can cause a lot of injury and also in, in it, it can be difficult especially in the long term to to maintain so they need to put their and just like um, Arab I said Austin said um, we need it to be television friendly so exactly. that investors can come in well the, the pitches let's hope that this pitch is being reverted will be completed and that means we we'll have in quite a number of good pitches in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But then, in terms of other issues concerning the league, as we look ahead to the commitment of the league, the issue of player welfare, you know, it's, it's good that LMC is giving attention to the state of the pitch. Mm -hmm. The issue of player welfare, how important is this to also to us having a very good league? Yeah. You cannot overemphasize uh, play, uh, when you're talking about player player welfare, I think it's very very important. You know when you when you look at the players because they are the actor, they are the one. You know who if if the players are not there, definitely you you you, you don't have a league. So if you are to take care of your players, it means you have uh, players who will be motivated. You know going into the league, and I don't know. I think this is something uh, is a problem we keep. Seen. It, it surface every time. Every time we are, we have a season. We have. I don't know. In it's only. Uh, I don't. I don't want to say it's only in Nigeria, but in Nigeria here we had where players go on strike because they are, they are being owed salary. It has happened over time, and I think it's not something that it does not bring a good name to us. You know, as you know, as a sit as as a country, so to say. And when you compare it with what or that, let, let me use Egypt, Tunisia, Algeria, all those uh, North African countries, when you see, you know, uh, what is being paid to the players, you know, one will wonder why, why do they have such a league and we are still struggling to, you know, have a, a bit of consist uh, consistency over here. And you see our players running to that place when we are supposed to build our league, you know, make the league strong. And you, you, you know when you have your own league is that, that is as good as, in what's obtainable in other places. I think you tend to control what happened in your league, like uh, you tend to control the number of foreign players, and you 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 have you know you you have your own say in 
in the area of development when it comes to developing your own players when we are talking about uh, age grade competitions you don't have to go and invite you know people from other leagues to come and play you know the under 17 but, world but, cup and but all then, that but but, but then do you, do you think that um players going out has to do with um the state of the league i still believe that um even if the league is well organized players will still go out because it will always be better over over there but then Maybe the, the point we, we should be talking about is the issue of um, giving it the best shot, yeah. which, I, which, which I also want to commend the LMC for. In recent times, we've had fast a big improvement. It wasn't um, a few years back, it was worse, but they seem to be getting right gradually, gradually. And I just hope that um, we'll continue to get it right and that this new season that we're expecting to start in December will be one that will be top-notch in terms of organization, in terms of standard of football, in terms of everything that has to do with player welfare, remunerations, even officiating at that. So we'll leave the league for now and we'll take a short break. When we'll come back, we'll go to Europe. We'll talk about the Nations League matches that were played yesterday and the big one that happened in Sevilla where Spain defeated Germany by six goals to nil. How did it happen? Well, we'll talk about it. We'll come back from this break. Welcome back to the Grand Sports Center and we're still talking uh, sports and precisely football as we go straight to Europe to talk about the UEFA Nations League matches that we played yesterday. The big one, like I've been saying, was what happened in Sevilla. Spain beat Germany 6-0. Ferran Torres, that name I'm sure will ring a bell from now onwards. Though he, he, he actually burst into the scene two seasons ago. And last year, he did very well and was signed by Manchester City from Valencia. He has not actually hit it off running at Manchester City, but then his potential has always shown in the matches he has played so far. And he actually proved that it was no fluke. It was not just a flash in the pan, that he was here to stay. That is a big name that the world will get to know in the years to come. He scored three goals in that match and his very first hat-trick of his career, incidentally, can you imagine getting your first hat trick in a match against Germany? Yeah. <laughs> How interesting is that? Very, very interesting. It's an interesting one. You know, it gives him that bit of confidence, you know, moving forward. You know, before now, I think uh, he has scored just one goal for, for, for Spain. So scoring three more goals, I think it will give him that, you know, that bit of confidence, you know, moving forward. And, you know, congratulations to Spain. Uh, They've been able to beat uh, Germany. And given the fact by, that uh, the last two or three matches of Spain, yeah. they lost to Switzerland yeah. in the last UEFA Nations League match. They drew a friendly match with Netherlands. And they lost, no, they drew with Switzerland yeah. and they lost to Ukraine. Yeah. You know, so they've not had the best of outings in recent times. Then only for them to come back and spank Germany by six goals to nil. So why are we all shouting about Super Eagles? Maybe our next match will spank <laughs> our next opponent by 10 goals to nil. But then, Spain, what, what does that tell you about the mentality of the Spanish team? Well, I, um, I think the, the Spaniards had the best of international football yesterday. You know, Germany did not really perform well in that, in that game. You know, the, the, Spain, the Spaniards, so they also have injuries in that match, but still, you know, they were just going around, scoring goals, 
and what Germany did was just defend in their game, obviously, and they took advantages of corners as well, you know. And look at Ferro, um, Torres scoring a hat-trick in that game. That shows how much they're ready to play um, their match and enjoy it. Honestly, if, you had, if there was enough time, they would have even scored even more than six goals in that game because they really enjoyed themselves in that match. Well, the other matches that were played yesterday in the UEFA Nations League saw Latvia beat Andorra by five goals to nil. That was another spanking. Malta and Ferros Island played 1-1 in Battle of Minos. Gibraltar and Liechtenstein won one another battle of um, Minos. Croatia lost at home to Portugal. So Portugal bounced back from their 2-0 loss to France. They beat Croatia in Zagreb by three goals to two. Spain, France continued their winning streak with victory over Sweden. We won by four goals to two. Sweden has been relegated from Group A by that result. Switzerland and Ukraine's match was postponed. We shall come back to talk about that match. Uh, Luxembourg and Azerbaijan played 0 0. Montenegro beat Cyprus by four goals to zero. The Switzerland match and Ukraine match was postponed because about six players of Ukraine tested um, positive for coronavirus. Ukraine. It was Dynamo Kiev that had players um, test, uh, that tested positive for coronavirus that they almost did not play against Barcelona mm -hmm. in their Champions League match. Then Shakhtar Donetsk, also a Ukrainian club, played without nine regulars because of, of um, the coronavirus. coronavirus. And also, though they eventually beat Real Madrid yeah. in that match, then now the national team, it was, what was it about? Well, we know that coronavirus is spreading around Europe, but I don't think we've had one country that has had um, coronavirus affecting players as much as we've had with um, Ukraine. But then the issue is not even about Ukraine, it's about the coronavirus. So, are we being realistic if we, if, if we are still, if, if we still feel that the season will still go on normally because we are, are we, are we bound to experience postponements like this? Not just national football, generally across Europe. Of course, we will see more of um, postponements and um, especially issues with um, coronavirus. But um, be that that is me, we, football has to, um, the games has, have to go on, you know. If, but, but if, if, field, if you see the game has to go on, are we being fair to the players? Well, well. We are not being fair, but at the same time, they, they need to make provisions, you know, for for who is going to be available to play. There are so many players who want to because, play the game of football. Because basically, we all want to see football, exactly football action. But then, these cases are becoming one too many. In in the Premiership this weekend, we're going to have 16 positive test cases yeah. already. So. And more players are coming back from international duties, and so at the end of the day, I will be fair to the players. I will see getting the right quality and standard of football the experience because teams will end up playing with depleted sides and things like that. Well, we'll leave that uh, for the authorities. They know the best how to handle it. And we're just expressing our own concern from this angle. But then, the, the picture for the semi-finals of UEFA Nations League is beginning to appear gradually. Yeah. We know France is there already. Spain with this victory of overtaking Germany on top of that group and pending the outcome of that postponed match with the Ukraine, Spain would have, let me say, would be as good as have gone to the semi-final. Yeah. We know that Belgium is likely yeah. coming from, because they play Denmark at home today, yeah. they're likely coming from the other group where we have England. So yeah. in a setting where you have the last time we had the likes of Portugal, England, mm -hmm. Netherlands. Netherlands, and Croatia, yeah. that was last semi-final yeah. setting. Now yeah. we are going to have France, Spain, Belgium. Belgium. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this one is, is we have more big, we have bigger teams. Yeah, they have bigger year, teams. Right? And yeah, they have bigger teams, you know. Uh, but, you know, it's still the same thing. Uh, when you compare it to last year, last year, uh, Netherlands were informed. You know the Portuguese team. You know how it is with them. You know they they, they have this never say die attitude, and I think it actually works for them. But then these uh, so-called big boys, you know, they're beginning to up their game. You know, and this is what the result we are seeing right there. Well, apart from the UEFA Nations League, there were also 
qualifiers, okay, apart from the UEFA Nations League and African Cup of qualifiers yesterday, they also qualifiers in South America. South Americans have already started their World Cup qualifiers. In Africa, we're not starting the World Cup qualifiers until next year. And for Europe too, World Cup qualifiers start next year. But the South Americans have started already. And um, so matches have been played for yesterday. We had uh, Brazil beat Uruguay by two goals to zero in, in uh, Montevideo. That's in, in Uruguay. And one interesting thing was that Edison Cavani was given the red card in that match. Um, Brazil, it's, it's not surprising when Brazil wins a match. But we know that in recent times they have not been as invisible as they used. Before we came on there, you mentioned the fact that how can Germany beat Spain, Germany that beat Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> That's, even despite it happened 2014, but it still um, lingers in memory because it was one result that took the world by a surprise. But Brazil, they seem to be back and better now. And the last couple of years, they've been doing very well, especially under the new coach, Chite. They beat Uruguay 2-0. Kwakabani had a red card. The South American qualifiers, it has started. Are we still going to get the traditional? Because South America has a way of bringing the same teams. You know, it has to be Brazil, Argentina has to be there, Uruguay has to be there. Somehow, at least those, Colombia has to be there. Think those four, then maybe one or two, either or Chile or Paraguay comes in to make it fight. So are we still going to have the traditional teams coming up? Of course, we are still going to have the traditional team coming. Like you said, South America have this um, um, flavor of um, football where you you have definitely see this um, South American teams play, you know, which is um, interesting. Very skillful way of play. Yes, yes, very skillful way and um, entertaining way of play. You know, the fact that um, Brazil defeated Uruguay was, was a good thing on their part. And they are, they, are, they are obviously improving based on you know, their previous performances, which is a good thing on their side. So, yeah. I expect the best. One, one of the interesting results to not only uh, Spain, Germany that was punked, Colombia too was punked, but they were able to pull one back. They lost by six goals to one to Ecuador. Ecuador and Colombia, balance of play. You know, the difference, Colombia is regarded as a bigger football playing nation in Ecuador, but yeah. Ecuador beat them 6-1. <laughs> I think um, the, the Ecuadorian side, you know, they're more like, how do I call Just it? Like, they're more like dark horses. Are you com the dark horses let me, be, that, be, be, uh, Before you come in, yeah. let, me, let me just uh, uh, expatiate a bit. You know, we're talking about Nigerians, so we are alone. Yeah. If we talk about the big name players, we could call Nigerian players that are big name players. Just like Colombia, we could yeah. call players that are big name players in Colombia. I mentioned uh, uh, Rodrigo, Rodrigo S. Uh, Mina. Mina, yeah, Mina yeah. Everton, yeah. Baka. So many of them, even uh, the Quadrado for Juventus. Oh, yeah. The goalkeeper was Pina, Pina. for Napoli. Yeah. So good players, you can think of Zapata too, the striker, who plays for Atlanta. Yeah. So, but. Ecuador, can you call one Ecuador player? The last one we knew was Antonio Valencia. Yeah. Yeah. He played for United how many years ago? Now he's playing somewhere in the lower leagues, uh, trying to retire from the game. Yeah. So, but it's Pan Colombia 6 1. Mm -hmm. So, why are we complaining about Supergos? I think uh, Ecuador, they are more like, just like I wanted to um, say, they're more like the dark horse in that, uh, you know, South, South, America. Uh, South America. You know, they, are, they have always been there. Uh, they, they don't. They, 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 it, it, it seems they don't want to go away. And at this point, they are they are informed. You know, uh, Brazil are first. So far, so good. Four out of four. They've won four out of four. Argentina second. They've won uh, three. They've drawn one. Then we have uh, this uh, Ecuadorian team with nine points. It shows you know uh, that spirit. At times, uh, one of the most important things in football is you know uh, team spirit. Team spirit is important in football, just like uh, it's also good to have, you know, good players, good set of players. So I think this is what they have working for them. The fact that they don't have a big name, uh, you know, to depend on. So it all uh, is all, a matter of, uh, you know, the team trusting each other and then trying to get the results. I think that's what is working for them. Well, Argentina too also had a good result. They won by two goals to zero. Venezuela beat Chile. That's a surprising result, 2-1. Why Paraguay and Bolivia played out a 2-2 draw. So, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, we'll go to other spots on the Grand Sport Extra.
Welcome back to the Ground Sport Extra. We go straight to tennis. And um, <laughs> I don't think Rafael, Rafael Nadal saw it coming. After he actually just strolled past um, Andre Rublet in his first match, we thought that this was a year for Rafael Nadal to win the ATP final, which is one tournament he has never won. So the only blemish in his career so far is the fact that he has not won the ATP tournament in terms of the big tournaments uh, being in men's tennis. But then he came crashing down to it when he met Dominic Thiem yesterday. Dominic Thiem spanked the world number two by 7 6, 9 7. That, that match went into a tie break. And then 7 6, in fact, both rounds went to a tie break. It was 7 6, then the tie break went into 9 7. Then under 7 6 again, then 7 4 after tie break. So Dominic Thiem, he was finalist last season. He won his first match against Sissi Pass. Now he's the first player to qualify for the semi final. Is this the year for Dominic Thiem? Uh, you know, we just wait and see. But the fact is, uh, he's driven, he's so driven to get to that point. You know, last year he played in the final, lost to Sissi Pass. And this year he's been in form. He won Sissi Pass in, in his first game and, you know, uh, in, against Nadal. It was actually a close one, a very, very tight game, and he came out, he came out on, on top, and it shows he is so, so determined you know, to get to that point. Is Rafael Nadal, can Rafael Nadal still bounce back in this tournament? Because he still has a match to play, he has to play um, Stefano City Pass in this last match. Can he still bounce back? Of course he can still bounce back. You know, when, when you, for him to have lost to to TM, there's probably a reason they've, they, they, they've been rivals for, should I say ri rivals for a while and TM obviously know that he needs to bang his um, sixth um, title in that, um, in that um, match, so he, in that game, so he, in that match, so he had to, you know, try as much as possible to win and he has this face-to-face um, -face, um, rivalry with um, Nadal, hoping that he, 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 he beats Nadal and he did um, in, um, in that um, in that uh, match, so I, I believe Nadal has an a um, has City Pass to play, so he has to redeem himself. It's an open competition, yeah, so City Pass. To win. City Pass for information won his second match after losing to Dominic He beat him and the Rublev, Rublev yesterday, so he is back in form. He has a chance. In fact, that match I'm sure is going to be a cracker because anyone anybody that loses will crash out of the tournament. So Nadal City Pass. It's one game to look forward to. Moving on now, we we'll talk athletics and South, Am South African double Olympic 800 meters champion Casta Semeya is still fighting, trying to ensure that he is given the opportunity to compete in his favorite sport. The, the ruling by by the World Athletics Federation um, a few years ago that because of his um, testo high testosterone level. It was giving undue. It was having undue advantage over other athletes. So he said, for you to compete, and for they, they came out with a ruling that any athlete that want to compete in any sports above 400 meters will have to have, take a testosterone that has that kind of um, um, uh, high production of testosterone in by the, by by a system or his system because it cuts across both gender. We'll have to take a testosterone suppressing drug or go through a surgery to to ensure that to, to such high production of uh, testosterone by the system will no longer happen. But Kasami said this is natural to me. I didn't bring it upon myself. It's just natural. This is how I was born. So why would I be made to pay for it? He has taken his case to the Court of Origin for Sport Cast. He didn't win there. And he took it to the Swiss Federal Tribunal, SFT. He also did not win. Now he's taking it to the European Court of Human Rights, and he says he's going to battle this way. Is Kasab Samaya fighting a lost battle? I think she's fighting a lost cause. You know, uh, the case is already decided, decided by Kass. And when she went to uh, the Swiss court, you know, she also lost there. And I think the world is all, is something they, they, that has already been decided. At, at this point in time, I just, I'll just say to her, you know, uh, just let it be. You can just as well change, uh, you know, uh, 
Sport change event. change the the event you can she, I, I heard she wanted to take part in the 200 meters Austin it's not as easy as that you may think okay fine it's it's a, it's, 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 it's 800 champion then 400 is shorter so it will be easier for him yeah. no no this team doesn't have to do with um, the length of the race it has to be the technique what yeah. you're used to and blessing for you you're a lady because mm -hmm. Samaya is um, for me, I, I, I feel for her because it's like I'm made to pay for something that happens to you naturally. Exactly. And, but then this is sport. And um, we have a governing body and rules and regulations. So the rules and regulations say this is how it is, this is how it is. It's still South African team to the, it's still included in the South African team to the Olympic Games. But then they don't know which sport they will compete in. Whether if he wins his case, he may go for 800. Mm. If he doesn't, maybe he may have to fall down. But for you, would, would, would it be wise for him to um, take the chance of dropping down to another sport where he doesn't have the assurance that he will win? After being after dominating 800 meters for a long time, that you now come to the sport where you start playing second fiddle. Um, is it worth it? Uh, because it may have to erase the memories of your performance in 800 meters. So what would you advise Katsumaya at this point in time? Well, um, if you ask me, I, I obviously feel for her, honestly, at this point in time, because this is someone that has been a world champion. Um, Olympic champion. Olympic champion, I beg your pardon, twice. I mean, 800 meter twice. Honestly, I, I, I feel we should see the final result of what her plea was going to Yes, end let, up her, to let her fight the leg battle to exactly. the last, and let's see what comes out of it. Let her not give up. That's what me, I would advise as well because um, she has a right to appeal and uh, fight the cause. You may, you may just get it at the uh, European Human Rights Court because they will, it, it will not be treated act like a, as a human right issue, no longer a sporting issue. And when it comes to that, maybe the sporting authorities will have to give in. As we wrap up on the program, we just close over the NBA. The NBA season will start on December 22, and the structure and format for the league has been revealed according to the release format. The preseasons will last from 11th of December to the 22nd of December, or to the 21st of December, because the league proper will start on the 22nd of December. The first half of the league will run from December to March, and um, they will have the All Star break, which is will run, which will be, which will be from from March 5th to March 11. Then from March 11 to May 16 will be the second half of the regular season. Then we have a playing tournament. This is a new one. Where we have the player, the team that finished seventh in each of the conferences will play against the player that finished eighth to get the seventh uh, player that will play in the playoff. And then the ninth, the team that finished ninth in each of the conference will play against the team that finished tenth to get the eighth. So, this new innovation, what is it all about? Is it meant to give the league more glamour? I think uh, it's all in a bit to like uh, reduce the time. You know, already the, the season has been affected by COVID 19. and you know, this is just them trying to compress the season, you know, reduce, uh, you know, the time. I think that's just that. And blessing, the NBA starts um, December 22. That means the, the players and the league and the NBA um, organizers have reached a compromise because that was the issue. The players wanted it in January or sometime next year, but the NBA said it must start in December. So they've been able to reach an agreement. How good is this to see that all the big leagues, all the big sporting events, all the big competitions are coming back again. Yeah, it's, it's, good, it's, a, it's a good thing to know that all the league events, the NBA, even the women league are obviously starting in December. So I think it's an interesting one, judging by the fact that they are bringing these um, new innovatives to um, the NBA. It's, it's one thing that we obviously wants you to you know, watch and also look forward to with great expectations. To. And that is where we wrap it up on Grand Sports Center for today. We hope we've been, we've been able to spice up your day with the news and the formations we've served you on the program today. The program will return tomorrow, same time, same station. And as usual, we're looking forward to having you join us once again because without you, we will not be here. I'm Donald Abababa. I quickly take a word from Austin Arume. I'm, I'm just so, so delighted that Nigeria did not miss yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about Nigeria, I'm blessing Basi. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit um, comfortable today compared to yesterday's um, event. Because Nigeria's match has come, come and gone within those. Well, on behalf of all of us here in the studios and the entire production crew, enjoy the rest of the day.